Typhoon Ketsana, known in the Philippines as Tropical Storm Ondoy, was the second most devastating tropical cyclone in the 2009 Pacific typhoon season with a damage of $1.09 billion and 747 fatalities, only behind Morakot earlier in the season, which caused 789 deaths and damages worth $6.2 billion. The storm was the 16th tropical storm, 8th typhoon and the second major typhoon in the season. It was the most devastating typhoon to hit Manila, surpassing Typhoon Patsy in 1970. Ketsana formed early about 860 kilometers to the northwest of Pile on September 23, 2009. The depression remained weak and was downgraded to a low-pressure area later that day by the Japan Meteorological Agency and after drifting through extremely favorable conditions, it intensified the next day and was categorized as tropical depression by the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration and was given the name Ondoy after entering the Philippine area of responsibility. The Joint Typhoon Warning Center issued a tropical cyclone formation alert on the depression. It was then upgraded to a tropical depression by the JMA later that morning before the JTWC followed suit early on September 25, designating the depression as 17W. Soon, Ketsana was upgraded to a tropical storm before passing over the Philippines. As it moved into the South China Sea the storm intensified while moving toward the west, and was categorized as a severe tropical storm by the JMA. Philippine President Gloria Arroyo declared a state of calamity encompassing most of Luzon after at least 86 people were initially reported dead in landslides and other incidents. Flood water levels reached a record 20 feet in rural areas. As of October 24, 2009, at least 464 deaths in the Philippines were officially reported from the typhoon. Meteorological History On September 23, 2009, the Japan Meteorological Agency, reported that a seasonal tropical depression had formed about 860 kilometers to the northwest of Palay. The Joint Typhoon Warning Center then reported later that day that the depression had a developing low-level circulation center and was in a favorable environment with low vertical wind shear. The JMA then reported that the depression had weakened into an area of low pressure. However, early the next day, as deep convection started to consolidate around the low-level circulation center, the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration reported that the low-pressure area had become a tropical depression and assigned it a local name of Ondoy. Later that morning, the JTWC issued a tropical cyclone formation alert as central convection had continued to organize around a consolidating elongated but exposed low-level circulation center. The JMA then re-upgraded Ondoy to a tropical depression later that morning before the JTWC followed suit early on September 25, designating it as Tropical Depression 17W when it was located about 400 nanometers east of Manila in the Philippines. At this stage, the system was moving along the southern side of the subtropical ridge and had good polluted outflow into a tropical upper tropospheric trough cell. Throughout September 25 the intensification of Ondoy was hampered by the system moving into an area of moderate vertical wind shear and by an upper level trough of pressure that was moving over the system. But later that day the JTWC upgraded it to a tropical storm despite its low level circulation center being partially exposed. The JMA followed suit early the next day assigning the international name of Ketsana and the international designation of 0916 to the storm. PAGASA then reported that Ketsana had made landfall on northern Luzon near the boundary of the Philippine provinces of Aurora and Quezon. As a result of making landfall, its low-level circulation center had become fully exposed, but as the storm moved into the South China Sea, it dramatically deepened and expanded while moving west and was upgraded to a severe tropical storm by the JMA early on September 27. During September 27, Ketsana gradually developed further and was upgraded to a typhoon by the JTWC and the JMA early the next day, as multiple convective bands were continuing to consolidate more tightly around the low-level circulation center, leading to the formation of a disorganized eye. Typhoon Katsina then intensified quickly under favorable conditions, 
reaching peak wind speeds later that day of 165 km per hour, and 140 km per hour which made it a Category 2 typhoon on the Safra Euro Simpson hurricane scale. Ketsana then made a second landfall on Quay Pound NG Nam in Vietnam, at 0600 UTC on September 29 at its peak intensity. It then rapidly weakened into a severe tropical storm, with the JTWC issuing its last advisory later that day. However, the JMA continued to monitor Ketsana as a severe tropical storm until later that day, when it downgraded it to a tropical storm before further downgrading it to a tropical depression early the next day when the center of the depression was located over Laos. The JMA monitored the storm as a weak tropical depression until late on September 30, when it released its final advisory. Preparations equals Philippines equals. On September 24, PAGASA placed the provinces of Aurora, Northern Quezon, Camarines Norte, Camarines Sur, and Catanduans under public storm warning signal number one which meant that winds of 30 a Euro 60 km per hour were expected to affect those areas within 36 hours. After the flood struck, some were critical of the government's failure to predict the scale of the disaster or to lessen the damage it caused. Equals highest public storm warning signal equals equals China equals late on September 27, both the Hong Kong Observatory and the Macau Meteorological and Geophysical Bureau placed Hong Kong and Macau under the standby signal number one. The bureau then considered hoisting the strong wind signal three, but decided it was not needed for Hong Kong, while Macau hoisted it early the next day. These warnings were kept in force until later that day when all warnings were lowered. On September 29 it was announced that parts of southern China would be placed under an orange warning with certain regional meteorological bureaus entering a level 3 emergency response. Equals Vietnam equals, on September 27, the Vietnam National Center for Hydrometeorological Forecasting issued a public storm warning signal named number 9. The government instructed residents to secure their homes with fortified hardwood and sandbag roofs. Also, authorities mobilized several thousand military personnel and police to help residents evacuate from the typhoon's path. Fishing vessels were called to return to their ports. This caused thousands of crops to fail. Impact equals Philippines equals Meteorological observations, note the soil can absorb between 100 a euro 150 mm with 200 mm maximum so more than 180 mm of rain means heavy flooding. An estimated 50 to 80 percent of the rainfall in 6 hours and 65 to 95 percent of the rainfall in 9 a euro 12 hours was recorded. Pre-post on the right side means any of the two days and is a 24-hour recorded rainfall before or after the highest 24-hour rainfall either on September 25 or September 27, 2009, September 24 or 26 for areas in Baikal region. The soil can absorb between 40 a Euro 60 mm in six hours without flooding, so many areas were heavily flooded in the provinces of Camarines Norte, Metro Manila, Bulacan. Baytangas, Laguna, and Rizal reported widespread and very heavy flooding with moderate to low flooding occurring in the provinces of Zambales, Pampanga, Batayan, Cavite and Quezon. Ondoy's rainfall turned out to be of a flash flood type and was very unanticipated and unprepared for, which led to many deaths and extensive destruction of property. Note, only 100 mm above listed. Landfall on September 24, 2009, Ketsana was estimated to be 330 km northeast of Virac, Katanguans, Philippines with a maintaining speed of 55 km per hour at its center. A day later, Ketsana was spotted 360 km southeast of Bela, Aurora with maximum winds of 65 km per hour near the center and gusts of up to 80 km per hour. PAGASA activated public storm signal number 2 for the provinces of Katanguans, Camarines Norte and Camarines Sur, and Palillo Island in Quezon. On September 26, shortly before noon in PST, Ketsana made landfall on the border of Aurora and Quezon provinces, with maximum winds of 85 km per hour near the center and gusts of up to 100 km per hour. 
At 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time that day, Quetzana approached Manila and caused widespread flooding in the cities of Manila, Calcan, Maracana, Malaban, Muntinlupa, Quezon, Makati, Pasay, Pasig, Taguig, Valenzuela, and San Juan. Flooding also occurred in the nearby provinces of Bulacan, Rizal, Laguna, and other southern Tagalog areas. Major roads were rendered impassable because of huge flood currents and clogged cars. Air flights were cancelled because of heavy rains. Earlier, power interruptions were reported in Camarines Norte and minor landslides occurred in Camarines Sur. EDSA was closed because of heavy flooding. Defense Secretary and National Disaster Coordinating Council Chairman Gilberto Teodono asked the DOTC to keep MRT and LRT lines operational to accommodate stranded passengers. State of Calamity On the afternoon of September 26, Teodono declared an overall state of calamity in Metro Manila and the other 25 provinces hit by the typhoon, allowing officials to utilize emergency funds for relief and rescue. Army troops, Police, and civilian volunteers were deployed to rescue victims. The Philippine National Red Cross and Philippine Coast Guard dispatched teams to rescue stranded and trapped people. At that time, the average height of flooding was from 2 feet to waist high, and in some areas more than 6 feet. Even Malacar Plus or Minus and Palace was open to those who were in need. The landslides and severe flooding left at least 246 people dead and 38 others missing. Public and private roads were clogged by vehicles stuck in flood water. Thousands of motorists and more than 500 passengers were stranded at the North Luzon Expressway. Distress calls and emails from thousands of Metro Manila residents and their worried relatives flooded TV and radio stations overnight as most of the power, communication, and water connections were lost. Quetzana also caused flights and operations to be shut down at Nino Aquino International Airport for almost a day. The economic region of Metro Manila and many adjoining provinces incurred damages to both infrastructure and agriculture. As of September 28, 2009, total damages from Quetzana were estimated at $100 million. Internet Cafe Copyright S, Entertainment Plazas, Banks, Food Stores Building agencies, and stores were soaked with water and mud. Many people were warned of leptospirosis. Maracana City, part of Metro Manila, was the most devastated region in the Philippines. Almost all of the city's area was submerged in water up to 10 feet deep and tons of knee deep mud. During the typhoon, the Maracana River broke its banks and transformed streets into rivers. Maracana residential areas, particularly Provident Village, were badly affected by flooding. At least eight people were found dead. Maracana itself recorded 78 deaths, the highest among Metro Manila cities. At the height of the flooding, around 100,000 liters of bunker oil from the paper manufacturing firm Noah's Paper Mill in Maracana City spilled. Most of the oil battered the city's barren gaze and a relatively small amount was washed into the basement of the SM City Maracana shopping mall. The spill later complicated rescue efforts in the city. Over a two-day period starting on September 29, the National Power Corporation Flood Forecasting and Warning System released 500 cubic meters per second of stored water from the Angat Dam in Bulacan. The dam had accumulated 100 cubic meters per second when Quetzana hit the province. Mandaluyong City also recorded more than six feet of flooding, especially in General Kalentong Street where flooding was more than 10 feet deep, badly affecting the local campus of Arilano University. The street recorded the highest flooding outside the Maracana city area. In Mindanao, several towns in Cotabato City and nearby Sultan Kudarat municipalities were submerged. The closing of the national highway in Bulilo, Cotabato City led to the isolation of connecting towns for several days. On September 28, PAGASA issued an 11 a.m. advisory cancelling all public storm signals in the country when Quetzana left the Philippine area of responsibility. Equals Vietnam equals. Quetzana made its landfall in Vietnam at mid-afternoon on September 29th about 37 miles south of Da Nang, Quê Pound and Nam province. The first two victims were killed by falling trees and electric lines. 
Quetzana's maximum winds were reported at 167 km per hour with gusts as strong as 204 km per hour as it crossed over the South China Sea and approached land. The Vietnamese government evacuated some 170,000 people as flood water rose high to the country's six central provinces. On the evening of the same day, Quetzana was forecast to be moving toward Laos then Mukdahan in Thailand. Heavy rains and strong winds lashed a 400 km stretch of coastline from Thathayana Euro to Kwe Pound and Jean Ga Pound I, with rainfall causing massive flood surges in Hue, Ba and Haanh, and Khun Tum provinces. Record high water levels were reported in rivers of Kwe Pound and Jean Ga Pound I, Khun Tum, and Jiali. Airports, schools, communications, and power lines in the affected area were shut down. Strong winds also destroyed parts of the north-south high-voltage power line, the backbone of Vietnam's electricity grid. The typhoon killed at least 163 people in Vietnam, 23 during the first hours after landfall. 17 people were missing and 616 injured. Total damage of Ketsana is estimate at $785 million. Equals Cambodia equals the weakening typhoon struck northeastern Cambodia as one of the most severe storms ever to lash the country, with the worst damage in Kampongdom province in central Cambodia. Death tolls reached 43 people. Also more than 66,000 families were forced from their homes by flood waters. Equals Laos equals, there was major flooding in the southern and central provinces of Laos, and much of the country experienced heavy rain and light flooding. Water was up to knee height in the province of Saravan, and at least 26 people died. The cities of Savan Narka and Pax were worst affected since they were directly on the pathway of the typhoon and directly on the Mekong River. In the Sifan Don area in Champasak province, some people took refuge on the roofs of their houses. The floods devastated rice fields and homes. Atapu was the worst hit province with nearly 90% of the province affected. Equals Thailand equals, Ketsana moved into Thailand as a tropical depression early on September 30. As the weakening cyclone moved through the country, widespread heavy rainfall and flash flooding were reported in 40 provinces. The heavy rainfall also helped to fill up natural reservoirs within the country. The depression partially damaged 4680 houses and destroyed 44 as well as 820,000 acres of agricultural land. Ketsana also injured one person and killed two before moving out of the country as an area of low pressure and dissipating on October 3 over the Andaman Sea. Total damages were estimated at just over $20 million. Three dams in Chaiyapum were damaged by the heavy rainfall, while in Pattaya nine boats were sunk waves reported to be over two meters high. Aftermath the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration documented a record high amount of rainfall in 24 hours at 455 mm. They also reported that Ketsana's rainfall was recorded from 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time slash 0000 of Saturday to 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time slash 0000 of Sunday. The amount of rainfall recorded for six hours, which was 341.3 mm, was comparable to the 24-hour rainfall in 1967. The damage to property was estimated to be P6 billion, including P4.1 billion in damage to infrastructure, P1.9 billion in damage to schools, and P882.525 million in damage to agriculture. According to the Bureau of Agricultural Statistics of the Philippines Department of Agriculture, an estimated 126,721 hectares of rice farming land were destroyed, which would affect almost 3% of the country's annual expected rice production. Added to this, Ketsana devastated some 1,374 hectares of corn plantations. Some 48 hours after Ketsana struck Metro Manila, the Philippine government appealed to the international community and the United Nations for help. Various United Nations agencies, the United States, the People's Republic of China, and Japan provided emergency assistance to the victims of the typhoon in the Philippines. The United States donated $50,000, while China and Japan gave $10,000 and $20,000 respectively. 
Australia provided 1 million Australian dollars and Thailand also provided humanitarian services. Germany donated a 500,000 as well the Republic of China donated $50,000. The United States also deployed Marines to help rescue victims in the Kananta and Pasig areas, as well as for search and retrieval operations for dead bodies. Special Forces operators and other U.S. service members attached to Joint Special Operations Task Force Philippines also assisted in aid efforts. An additional 3,000 U.S. troops were expected to arrive to assist in relief efforts. U.S. non-profit International Disaster Relief Organization A. Mary Cares shipped $3.2 million worth of medical aid for Ketsana survivors. An Israeli search and rescue party, and doctors, nurses, and paramedics were sent to the Philippines. In the Philippines, the National Disaster Coordinating Council headed the rescue and relief operations for the citizens affected by Ketsana's flooding. There was also a counterpart private sector effort among companies and NGOs to provide and coordinate relief activities in various areas. The Philippine Army deployed about 1,000 soldiers in Metro Manila and surrounding provinces to help in operations. The Philippine National Red Cross and the Philippine Coast Guard also deployed teams and rubber boats to rescue people stranded in their homes. On the Internet, citizens turned to various social networks like Twitter, Facebook, Plurk, and Multiply to share news updates and forward cries for help from people trapped in the floods. Google Maps was used to pinpoint locations of stranded people while various blogs and websites shared information on how to donate money and in-kind goods. Donations arrived from all over the world and were solely needed. After Typhoon Ketsana and Typhoon Palma, the government of Japan has given the Philippines a P1.7 billion grant to improve the country's weather monitoring and information dissemination system. Equals international aid to the Philippines equals Australia, 11 million Australian dollars, Canada, 5 million 100 thousand Canadian dollars, aid packages, Water Purification Systems Canadian Federal Government, 5 million Canadian dollars, priority and visa applications for both temporary and permanent residents, Province of Manitoba, 100,000 Canadian dollars. China, $140,000, Japan, $20,000, European Union, a 2 million, Germany, a 500,000, Israel, medical teams, Malaysia, 20 tons of food aid. New Zealand, 25,000 New Zealand dollars, Singapore, $20,000 and 3,200 water purification sets, South Korea, aid workers, Taiwan, $50,000, Thailand, humanitarian services, United States, $3,250,000 US dollars government, $50,000 US dollars military, USS Tortuga and USS Harpers Ferry. 3rd Marine Expeditionary Force plus 20 USMC personnel, a helicopter and 4 Zodiac inflatable boats. A. Marie Cares, $3.2 million. Paris Lilans Incident, Vietnamese officials and media reported that Chinese naval forces mistreated Vietnamese fishermen who tried to take shelter from the typhoon and the disputed Paris Lilans. The Chinese Navy allegedly fired on Vietnamese fishing boats when they tried to take shelter at True Cow Island to escape Typhoon Ketsana and after being allowed to stay on the island for several days, they were robbed and beaten by Chinese forces before leaving. Vietnam and China have an agreement that fishermen from either country can ride out storms in the other's territory. Nguyen Viet Thang, chairman of the Vietnam Fishery Association said his organization was preparing an official protest to China over the incidents. Colonel Bui Phuphu, vice chief of the border guard forces of the fishermen's home province of Kwe Pound and Jean Ga Pound I, confirmed the accusations and said the Ministry of Foreign Affairs should send a protest to China. An official at the Chinese embassy in Hanoi said China had no comment on the accusations. Retirement, due to the damage and deaths caused by the storm, the names Ketsana and Ondoy were later retired. The committee selected the name Champi to replace Ketsana on the Western Pacific Basin name lists beginning in 2011. It was first used in the 2015 season. In 2012 the name selected by PAGASA to replace Ondoy was Adet and was first used in the 2013 season.
removal of Prisco Nilo, when President Benigno Aquino III took office in June 2010. PAGASA Chief Administrator Prisco Nilo was fired and removed from his post on August 6. The agency accused Nilo of having a supposedly foolproof forecast of Typhoon Ketsana as the typhoon struck over Metro Manila. Aquino adds lack of disaster preparedness and slow installation of Doppler weather radar and other equipment, and slow voluntary response that left the agency unmodernized. Nilo left PAGASA after Graciano Umal, Jr., took Nilo's vacant seat. This similar accusation also happened on the aftermath of Typhoon Baixiang in July 2010. Nilo was in Australia for his new post as weather forecaster of the Australian Weather Bureau. See also, Typhoons in the Philippines, Typhoon Palma, a typhoon that hit northern Luzon just right after Ketsana devastated the Philippines capital and killed just as many as Ketsana, effects of the 2009 Pacific typhoon season in the Philippines, Typhoon Haiyan, deadliest tropical cyclone to strike the Philippines in modern history, Typhoon Beaufort, Tropical Storm Washi, Tropical Storm Thelma, deadliest tropical cyclone to strike the Philippines in the 20th century, Tropical Storm Fung Wong, also a tropical storm that hit northern Luzon and marked a fifth anniversary of Typhoon Ketsana, Typhoon Meji, Typhoon Mirine, Typhoon Nari, Typhoon Hagupit. Other tropical cyclones that have struck Manila with significant impacts, Typhoon Ramesan, Typhoon Konsan, Typhoon Durian, Typhoon Xangsan, Typhoon Chanchu, Typhoon Angela, Tropical Storm Lucille, Typhoon Rita, Typhoon Patsy. Typhoons in northern and central Vietnam, September 2009 Vietnam Tropical Depression, effects of the storm led to heavy rainfall throughout central Vietnam in together year, Tropical Depression 18W, known in Vietnam as the eighth storm in 2013, effects from flooding in Vietnam, Laos and Thailand, Typhoon Wutip, made landfall Vietnam, marked a fourth anniversary of Typhoon Ketsana, flooding and damage in Vietnam as terrible as Ketsana. Typhoon Sun Tin, made landfall and caused the big damage for northern and central Vietnam in 2012. Sun Tin was also damaged in the Philippines by flooding. Tropical Storm Cecil, also a severe tropical storm, that struck Vietnam in May 1989 and damaged by flooding, Typhoon Cecil, struck central Vietnam and caused the bigger damage than Ketsana, Typhoon Legma. Notes. References. External links, RSMC Tokyo, Typhoon Center, Best Track Data of Typhoon Ketsana, Best Track Data of Typhoon Ketsana, Best Track Data. JTWC Best Track Data of Typhoon 17W, 17W Ketsana from the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory.